people don't realize the United States, we're profitable 40 to 60 dollars a barrel. Russia and Saudi Arabia are not. And you know, we're the idiots that let them now make money on 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 energy, where we could have sat at 40 to 60 dollars and just keep driving, you know, domestic production and driving technology and and uh, but anyway, I'm on a horse now. But well, that's not very that, global th agenda there, Bob. You sound so nationalist. You're not allowed to I do know. that. We're in a global agenda. How dare you? Good afternoon, everyone. Bob Kudla is joining me today, tradelikeagenius.com. Now, if you'd even watched our interview from last month, how many things have come to fruition in just these last 30 days that we were talking about? So as we look out through media headlines across the blogosphere, and I was reading one today, global summer of starvation is what they're going to term this. And we've seen a lot of countries get into the panic mode, knowing that their governments will be toppled if they do not keep food resources in their borders. So, you know, looking out, we could look for food nationalism or resource nationalism where things will not be exported. The reprogramming of pumps across the U.S. for $10 or four-digit gasoline just shows where they're already in companies are intending for prices to move to. And then how that's going to curtail the entire economy as we go into depleted crop yields based on non-availability of fertilizers, farmers taking prevent plant because it was too expensive to plant or they didn't have the actual farm inputs to get it in the ground, the intention versus what's really happening is now very stark. We're, we're setting up to something we haven't seen. I'm not even going to say in multi-generation, it'd be more than multi-century. And it's just going to start spiraling from here. So Bob, I appreciate you joining me. And as always, I'm trying to pick your brain for ideas as we move through, as well as everybody watching so they can get a glimpse on how our society and world is moving economically. But that is also the next step up for the society, how it's going to move and how people will behave. Probably not in a very nice polite way this time. When it comes to your food and your children starving, your politeness is probably going to be the first thing that goes out the door. But anyway, Bob, thanks for joining. And, you know, like I said, natural gas, you mentioned silver, we'll talk silver in a second. But to me, you know, the areas that you want to focus on natural gas, you want to own silver, you want to own energy. Now you want to own propane, liquid petroleum products. Absolutely. That wasn't on my radar two years ago. I own a bunch of it now. And then the food processing companies, you want to be in the supply chain. And then on the commodity level, you don't have to be a futures trader. You can own these ETFs, wheat, corn, soybeans. And, and then you'll be able to manage your position. And then if we're in an inflationary environment, you want to own energy. If we slip into deflation, you're going to own, believe it or not, you want to own bonds. Keep your life simple and you're going to out, you're going to out earn your cost of living increases and um, then you'll be in a position of less stress and you don't need a whole lot of money to do this kind of stuff, you know? So, you know, look at the moves we had in, in, in uranium, 25% move in two weeks. You know, you know, if you just follow the rhythm of these trades, you're going to be able to make a lot of money fast and then hop off and then look for the next opportunity in the same space. So um, we certainly can help you with that. Because that's one thing, these markets are going to continue to trade all the way through the tumultuous times, you know, and I, again, I've always said this is one of the biggest opportunities in human history, because there's going to be more needs that are going to arise during this time to solve problems of this time. But at the same time, if you yep. can look out into the future, just a sliver, and you can see where the problems will be focused. Ah, that's exactly what Bob's talking about here and what we're both seeing moving along. So 2023 is going to be a completely different animal than what we're seeing now. So, you know, it's good to talk about what's coming up to this point through the harvest season, how people's minds might react. Russia's really put us in a corner, so they're going to be causing civil unrest and hunger. And a lot of people go to the streets, which is even more, I guess, detrimental for a government because it's, it's just different than having an army move somewhere. And now, now you got your own citizens fighting against a destabilization platform there. But 2023 is going to unravel in a completely different fashion once the Awareness of people needing to be more self-sufficient. And the reason I bring that up is silver. And I talked to a lot of people who are prepping out, getting ready for this, holding on to the metals there. 
So, you know, Defense Authorization Act using a lot of silver and solar panels and green tech, and then also silver for tradables, barterables during a uh, scenario that could be envisioned if there's some sort of banking holiday or, or if things are revalued or something, zeros lopped off the currency, that piece of silver is still going to have its value. So what do you think of from here through 23? Yeah, so the Fed has to stop raising interest rates for silver to really take off. Although it stopped going down, and you know we took some positions in in GOLD, which is Barrick Gold, GDX, GDXJ, and we got our first buy signal in SLV for a long, long time. So uh, I own personally in my long term portfolio own Hecla, and the reason why I own Hecla, I'm a United States citizen. They have most of their mines in the U.S. And I want to own things that are close to my legal system. You know, whether you I trust it, my government or not. <laughs> let me stop for a second. What do you think about nationalization of mines in a national emergency and you own, own those mining? Do you think that th those mines could be nationalized? No, not in the United States. They're going to do this defense authorization, execute whatever it is called uh, to force them to produce. You may get a situation where um, but Congress has to approve it. Biden just can't declare an emergency and start doing price controls all over the place. You know, it, it'll, there'll be a lot of lawsuits on that. They'll have to justify it. But yeah, look, you're going to see pressure. You know, you're already hearing people screaming about we need windfall profit taxes on, on you know, energy producers. So yeah, I would start seeing it. Food will be the one that people will be mostly interested in. Silver is a little bit like, uh, how does that connect with food? But food prices you know you're gonna see companies like pilgrim's pride getting dragged up in front of congress saying hey you know the cost of your 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 product went up 30 percent why are you doubling the cost of food that's you're taking advantage of people people can't afford it they're going to starve we're going to engage legislatively so i think you'll see that in food i don't think you'll see it in the miners so much you see what i th think is happening is happening so the trump protected created the strategic metals thing. Biden's now taking the next step forward, which I fully support. We got to protect our domestic industries here uh, so that people don't suck us dry. And, and I think you're going to see other countries going to go tit for tat because people are starting to understand now saying, oh, shoot, you know, Europe and the United States have been, China have been sucking our countries dry. We have nothing to show for it. So you're going to start seeing more nationalization to mines outside of what I call the big five, you know, what do you call it? The, the big eye. What is the five eyes countries? Right. You know, so, and, uh, and I think you'll see Argentina will do it too, because they're chronically in debt. You know, they'll probably nationalize mines there. And, um, but the United States, Canada, look, you keep your money, United States, Canada, Australia, you know, I mean, look, I'm in my backyard, I'm already, I already replaced 15% of my, uh, my grocery purchases and I have a small yard, you know, you'll start seeing that multiplied, you know, across the board here as people will start saying, I have to do more myself. I have a neighbor now that has six chickens. He doesn't buy eggs anymore, you know? And, uh, so you're going to see more and more of that kind of stuff and, and where people are going to are going to try to control their own personal supply chain, which is a great idea, you know, and, you know, forget trade genius trying to pitch my services kind of stuff. And you talking about Grant Solomon, there's tremendous opportunities here. Uh, I mean, if I was 25 again, food tech is where I'd be, I'd be knee deep into food tech. I mean, there's going to be millions are going to be made in food tech. And, um, and, you know, um, not to plug anywhere else to go, but you know, if you just go out onto the YouTube and just look at what the Israelis and the Dutch and the U.S. is doing in terms of the technologies that are being created, are just are mind blowing. You know, you're basically climate independent for a lot of food now, and so uh, I think you're going to see more and more of those opportunities, and and I think people need to kind of open their horizons a little bit. And plus, the fact is, maybe we'll get you out of the city. Where the cities are going to be pretty unsafe. I'm going to go for a look at they're stealing stuff now to sell on the streets. Wait till they start stealing food, and then the food trucks just won't come in, and you're going to see massive exodus out of these cities. So, just remember, you know, just draw a circle 180 degree, 180 miles around any city center. You want to be outside of all those, and that's that. That's basically getting your car to and back 
if you're going to go try to rob and pillage, right? So um, if you're outside that area, they're not going to be able to rob and pillage you if the, if the stuff hits the fan. But, hey, I got one more for you. I know you know I always like to jump around. But um, yeah, if you want to Cobalt Company in Canada, there's some yeah. OTC companies out there. I think it's CC, CCWOF. Uh, I own a little bit of it. It's a cobalt company. I think it's cobalt and uranium in 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 the um, I think it's either not PEI, but it's it's in Nova Scotia. It's it's in that northeast one of those northeastern provinces. Uh, New Nova. Lot- there's so many, yeah, there's a whole area up there. And oh, that was the last glaciation point of the what we consider the Wisconsin glaciation point was right up there in the Nunavut Island area. So the side bit of info there. So keep going. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, it's I think, uh, you know, and, and look, Canada can't survive without selling their resources. So, you know, you're going to look for the opportunities. I, mean, I own Can Alaska Uranium. Uh, that's a good company. It's an OTC company. You got to have a few of these sprinkled in your uh, portfolio because you never know when you're going to wake up one day and it's going to be up 10x, especially when some big guy comes in and just tries to tries to take the company out. They're going to have to pay massive premiums for these companies. So cobalt is definitely going to be needed. Um, you know, I own lithium. I own not only a, you know, only a lithium mine in the United States. Its stock is called LAC. I have it tucked away. Okay. And so, um, you know, those are the companies you want to own. Don't want to screw around with tech and all that garbage. You want to own things that hurt when you drop it. Okay. And that people will need when they're starving. Okay. But that means They're like a piece of metal on your toe. Ouch. You know, really, you really are talking about physical metals because this, moving this green agenda, they're going to need metals. They're going to need an enormous amount of metals. If they're going to really push it, I mean, you could probably do a whole show on just listing the metals from A to Z that are going to be needed in this conversion just to green tech. Well, why don't we do that? Maybe let's do July. I will just walk through the charts. Does that sound fair? Yeah. And just focus it on metals and grains and yeah, things that you put in your belly that can keep a society moving forward. But at the same time, you know, that set of meetings that was going on in uh, Davos, Switzerland, they had already said that there was over a hundred trillion dollars already pledged to this green conversion as of this year in financing. So this is not going away. It is going to continue in its journey down however far it needs to go. But there's a lot of metals that are going to be involved in this. And most of them are not above ground right now at the level they need to get us even 5% of the way down to where they envision this 100% renewable energy world that we're going to be living in. So between there, that's going to be a long journey and there's going to be uh, a lot of companies that are going to benefit from that. Yeah, look, you know, you can only fight it so much unless you're overtly doing something immoral. It's okay to invest in these companies. Okay. Unless you know what they're producing is it is an immoral product, but you know, you know, whether you agree or disagree with renewable energy or the Green New Deal, you know, I think it's coming regardless. I think there's probably a very real concern about do we have enough fossil or petroleum based fuels going forward? Um, so it's legitimate to look at these things. It's illegitimate the way they're going about doing it, but definitely we're leaning that way. Look, I just saw a, a boat totally 100 percent solar. OK. You know, I see you're going to start seeing these things um, come up. <clears throat> I've seen uh, all the harbor cruising boats now are, are um, basically battery solar, no problems, you know, and, and now you're seeing this incredible wind technology with kites. You've seen the kite sailing mm-hmm. on these massive 14 to 15% reduction. See, we just need to apply our engineers to these problems. And, you know, you're going to, you're going to be able to reduce the, the, cost of energy in the supply chain you know if government gets involved and it's just subsidized the wrong crap for the poly- for the politically connected versus letting these prices go where they go normally and and allow technology tend to, to create cheaper and cheaper energy. that's what happened that when trump was in we were we were we were basically taking advantage of the efficiencies that were coming into it and he just added supply to that and created a, a basically a Goldilocks scenario around between 40 and $60 a barrel. And so what people don't realize the United States, we're profitable 40 to $60 a barrel. Russia and Saudi Arabia are not. And you know, we're the idiots that let them now make money on, on, on energy. 
where we could have sat at 40 to $60 and just keep driving, you know, domestic production and driving technology. And, and, uh, but anyway, I'm on a horse now, but well, that's not very that global th agenda there, Bob, you sound so nationalist. You're not allowed to I do know. that. We're in a global agenda. How dare you? Yeah. Well, I think what's going to happen is that the globalists are causing the national agenda to come forward. It's so funny, <clears throat> you know, they did the League of Nations, and what did we get? We got World War II, right? You know, um, they do the UN, and what do we have? 50 years of conflicts all around the world. Now there's WEFs coming in, and we're getting populist governments going to be populating throughout the whole United States. I think it's whatever they call it, the fourth turning. I think that's, it's all part of it. So, you know, we're going to be – we're getting tribal, okay? And and these, these long supply chains, to benefit some rich dude somewhere else, it's not going to fly when people are like saying, hey, you know what? Uh, that corn's not leaving Pennsylvania. OK, it better be going in my belly or it better be going into my cow or pig or chicken or egg. OK, and then I'll buy it here versus you shipping it all the way to China and then have me pay twice as much for the food because you just sent it over there on a sweetheart deal. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that kind of stuff. And then I got to run. I can't believe the time always flies with you, Dave. But check oh, us out, trade with us. We're, we're doing yeah, tradegeniusacademy.com or tradelikeagenius.com. Promo code Father's Day, one word. The bundle is 65% off. <clears throat> we trade stocks, we trade uh, crypto, we trade the uh, futures markets. We'll even teach you how to do this stuff. We have algorithms, you have access to them. So it's a good system. You're making money. Um, I'm happy to show you guys the system next month. Uh, I think you'll like it, and we'll walk through all the commodity companies, I'll show you some good dividend paying companies. And, uh, and look, you can stay ahead of the You can stay ahead of this beast. Okay. And, you know, be one of the winners out of this. Don't be one of the victims and you don't need a whole lot of money to trade and we'll show you how to do it. <clears throat> and as Dave will tell you, I'm, I'm not a Lambo guy. You know, I don't promise you riches, but I definitely will, will keep you ahead of the game and put you in a situation where you'll have life lessons and skills to be able to independently uh, take care of your family. And that's the way we need to think, bringing it back again, taking care of our families in a local fashion where everybody benefits because humanity is working together versus fighting each other. And again, this whole top-down approach of million mile delivery chains, not gonna work. And the changing magnetic field of the sun might also have some effects on how our brain is also behaving and perception of reality. So you're going to see a lot of changes coming through, but Bob, thanks for the info. I got in a little, a whole note list here as you were talking and I uh, do thank you for uh, sharing your ideas today and everybody out there. I'll put the link in the description box below so you can just go click and go. You don't have to type anything into your browser bar, make it that much easier. Please visit tradelikeagenius.com. See what Bob has over there. And until next month, do your own research. Bye for now.